This is part of a conversation I'm having with a certain user whose name is terribly hard to remember. D-L-U-V-V-1976-1. Uh, so I made a video called Discipline and Punishment, and then in parentheses, Raising Moral Sons and Daughters. And I just talked about um, ways that you can ensure that your children are disciplined and moral and all that stuff. And I got some feedback and I'm going to read the feedback and then give my perspective on it. It has to do with someone being a, a step parent and not wanting to overstep their bounds. Like, oh, my spouse and I, we have a differing of opinions and, and I really think this, but I don't want to overstep the bounds. So it goes like this. The person says, great video, Russ. Ah. And we'll stop it there. Okay. Great video, Russ. I've been dealing with the aspect lately of my daughter is soft-spoken and basically a soft-hearted kid that is generally nice most of the time and my stepson gives her hell and his mother tells my daughter she needs to toughen up and basically talk shit back to him. I don't agree with that. And so that's what he said. And I responded saying, kids, people in general, deserve more protection and peace of mind. I spelled peace wrong. Um, peace of mind. They deserve more protection and peace of mind than to be told to toughen up. And you shouldn't be letting him, the stepson, give your daughter hell or letting his mom blame her for his bad behavior. As in the mother of this son, the, the guy is, is with the girl, he has a daughter, she has a son. The mother of the son is saying, hey you, you should talk back to him and then he'll learn not to, to treat you that way. And you stand up for yourself, no. This mother should be raising her son not to think he can treat people poorly. And so I more or less, that's what I said. And he says, I agree. And I don't let her, the mother, uh, do that. I, I think her, the mother. Well, okay. And I am all on his ass, the stepbrother, when he does it. I basically tell his mother that she is allowing him to condition himself to be a person that picks on people that are weaker than him and that he feels he can treat any old way. And he is a couple of years older than her, but boy, when things don't go his way, he will whine and cry. The funny thing is that he whines and cries about getting his way way more than my daughter does. Then he turns around and calls her whiny after he's been picking on her. We've been in a relationship, him and the mother, for seven months now, and there is a clear difference between our two kids. My daughter doesn't disrespect me and talk back. She does what I tell her to do, and she is the complete, and he is the complete opposite. Not to say my daughter is perfect, in no way she is still a kid, uh, she is still a kid, and she has to be put in check sometimes, but the bad part is I can see his bad habits rubbing off on her, so I am quite... I'm not quite sure how to intervene in the situation without overstepping bounds. A couple of things going, a couple of things going right back through the comment. You, you agree in that you don't let her do that. It's good. So you say. I'm going to be going based on that you're giving accurate information. Not that I assume you're not, but I'm just going to say my feedback relates to this information you're giving me being accurate. I basically tell his mother that she is allowing him to condition himself to be the kind of person that, no, she is not allowing him to condition himself. She is conditioning him. It's what we call enabling. The, the enabling has this connotation of nice women who tolerate mean men. They're, you're an enabler. No, you are facilitating. You are creating that in the other person by giving them encouragement, by not giving them discouragement. He, she is not encouraging him to, to create that in himself. She is creating that in him. She's being a bad mother. And one day he's going to be set up for failure unless she changes. The problem is, it's, he's a boy. As soon as he gets past some imaginary mark and seems more like a man than a boy, and maybe even while a boy, she will be the victim of the bad parenting that she put forward. Uh, but there's more. Uh, she's a couple of years. He, he's a couple of years older, but when he doesn't get things his way. Uh, he whines and cries. The funny thing is he whines and cries about getting his way way more than my daughter. Of course, you're just speaking lazily. It's not funny at all. It's not funny that boys are raised to be whiny and weak. 
it's bad parenting. More and more, this is a video I'm going to do later, but more and more, um, single mothers, I'll be addressing specifically in a little bit, but more and more single mothers are raising these kinds of, of weak, whiny boys because the boys see that's how she gets her way with people, not by reason or anything, just by whining to get her way. The problem with those kind of bad single mothers raising boys is because they set those boys up for terrible failure because it's like, he sees that and like, oh, I guess that's how you get your way. Not knowing that, no, this is how you get your way if people are sexually retarded and addicted to you as a woman, but you won't be able to play that card. You're going to have to be a real man, which is to say not a foolish woman who is weak. Uh, way more than your daughter, he whines. Uh, turns around and picks on her. Okay, so you've been in this relationship for seven months and there's a clear difference between the two kids. Uh, your daughter doesn't talk back and whatnot. Okay. If you're raising your, your kid better than she's raising a kid, uh, you, you say you don't want to overstep the bounds. But the fact is, um, in another video, I think even the one, the, the discipline and punishment, uh, one that I'm referring to, and it's in this comment section, I talk about the homeless mother of four who I brought in and let her stay with me and my kids. I let them have the master bedroom, her and her four kids. I took care of her kids while she was trying to get her life straight, go to welfare and all that. But I ended up having to ask her to leave, asking her, sending her away, her and her kids, because she was a bad influence on my kids. Here's my point as it relates to you. Seven months, you've been with her for seven months. It is your place to intervene. There's no overstepping bounds. You guys are more or less like this as it comes to a family union, unit, or at least that's how your daughter is going to see it. So if she is being poisoned, your role as a good parent is to not tolerate bad parenting whatsoever. If it's accurate what you're saying and the mother allows him to be this way, then you can say, hey, she can let you do whatever you want, but you can't do that around here. And you can even say to her, like I said to the other lady, you can't tell your son anything but this this thing. You're failing as a parent. So in so many words, this is what I would recommend saying to her in your own way. And, and definitely don't quote the guy on YouTube. A guy on YouTube told me to tell you. Whatever, however you would phrase it, tell her you, you are failing. You're raising a whiny, weak vicious son and it's your fault P plenty of people in our culture are going to blame the boy and they're going to find some reason to to have you be a victim you're a mother where was the father maybe she antagonized him right out of the picture i'm going to make another video about that in a while the the idea that well papa was a rolling stone you know my dad was never there for me more and more boys and girls are starting to realize wow you know what my mom was a total bitch I love her sentimentally, but I don't like her. She did the best she can. More and more, they're going to find out, oh, wait, she drove my father away. She didn't do the best she can because the best she can was not to be a self-righteous, tedious bitch. So she failed me. She drove my father away. More and more kids are going to see this. So the, the nice thing to do to this woman is to not set her up for the failure of saying, we have seven months in, so I'm going to allow you to act this way, set you up for eventual failure when I blow up at you, and then passive aggressively act like I've been telling you every step of the way. This is annoying. This is unacceptable. you got to tell her sooner than later, or you're the passive ag aggressive problem that's enabling her bad parenting. Tell her she's doing a bad job and that you don't let your daughter be around people who raise their sons that way. If it's important enough for your kid, you'll do that. Seven months? That's nothing. Not just in terms of, I mean, it could be 20 years. Uh, speaking of 20 years, $20. There's a saying that if you loan someone $20 and you never see them again, it's probably a good thing. Meaning you lost the $20, but you learned something about their character. So if you invest even 20 years and then you find out, oh, well, this person's not who I thought they were. You do what you can to try to salvage things. You do what you can to level with this person you've been with for seven months. But if you deal with someone for seven months and then you just have to say, you know what? Your parenting style is completely unacceptable. That's what you should do if it comes to that. I just did another video about the whole, well, this is just my, you know, this is just my way of doing things. Everyone has their way of doing things, this kind of passive supposed humility. And that's the same kind of thing as, as when you said, oh, she has her style. I have my style. You know, we both kind of, we just do stuff. And so we meet in the middle. No, like I said, if you are raising successfully this daughter and she is failing to raise this son, you are a better parenter in that respect you guys need to get on the same page she needs to adopt some of your stuff you need to adopt some of her stuff not because everyone should have a say but because you're probably not better than her at every aspect of parenting you should 
encourage her to be more like you as a parent and to not set her son up for failure. And if she's not willing to, you need to leave. Most importantly though, you have to take an accurate assessment of what you've told me and really think about what I've told you because what you don't want to do is say, wow, that guy on YouTube sure was smart. He said exactly what I think I want to hear. He said exactly what I think I already know. Meanwhile, you might be deceiving yourself and realizing you're enabling this woman and really if you just stop enabling her, she'll stop enabling her son and your daughter won't get teased, something like this. So it's not enough just to take the articulate person's word for it that you need to stop, dump that zero and get with the heroin or whatever it be. But nevertheless, there's no such thing as overstepping bounds. You're a step parent because something failed in her previous relationship, barring that she's a widower, she failed in her pr previous relationship. So as much as in our culture, we just say, well, no, it's probably the guy's fault. Let's move on. No, she failed in her previous relationship. So there's no need to hide behind the idea that, well, everyone gets their say, the mother says, the father says, he said, she said, no. What is the father saying? What is the mother saying? Who is right? Whose idea is better for the child? Whose should we enact? Again, if she's raising a son who is mean to your daughter, and then she's being a bad parent, step parent, to your daughter saying, well, you know what the problem is? Not that I'm being a bad parent and raising a bad son. The problem is you're not aggressive enough back so that he is intimidated away from being aggressive towards you. That's bad parenting. And that's the kind of ridiculousness that plenty single mothers and mothers in general inculcate into boys and girls. And that's why mothers, as much as they're just nurturing, they create vicious children because they don't teach their kids fairness. They don't teach them real cause and effect. They teach, if I'm mad enough, then I yell at my son and then he knows that mean business. So she's telling your daughter, you know what, just get mad at him and show him you mean business and then he'll leave you alone. We're not chimpanzees. You're not supposed to have to make your personal space or else you're going to get antagonized by your brother. Again, you are facilitating this bad behavior in the mother by not absolutely nipping in the bud and saying, seven months is a long time, but it's nothing. My daughter is, however old your daughter is. In 10 years, my daughter will be this age and you will not be around my daughter and I won't be around your son if you keep facilitating this bad behavior, and especially when I see it rubbing off on, on, my, um, on my daughter. Some form of this, you need to think a little bit more about your role in facilitating this bad mother. The, the mother, well, not so much a bad mother, it's, that's like a personal way to say it. This mother who has bad parenting habits. It's, it's not so simple as your daughter's the victim, the son is the villain, the mom is stuck somewhere in between of being a victim because she's a woman, but she's a villain because she's kind of helping him to be able to do it. No, no. Your daughter needs a leader. You need to be that leader. This woman failed in her last relationship. Apparently you failed in your last one. Someone needs to be a leader. If she's raising bad kids, she can't be the leader. She can help, but you need to be the leader for your daughter for sure. And you also need to be the leader for this person because she's going to ruin her son and he will hate her forever for it. He'll love her sentimentally. He will not like her. So you need to lead all of them or else you need to find someone who manages themselves or is willing to let you lead. Or you can find if, if, a, if a woman wants to do that feminist thing and be the leader, okay, then she also gets the accountability. When the kids are bad, you're to blame. You get the final say, the mom's word goes, then she gets the blame. This mom gets the blame for the son. You get the blame for how your daughter is. And you're saying your daughter is good, respectful, sometimes needs to be put in check. Who doesn't? Not me. But your daughter's doing well, nice to hear. But if you allow that dynamic between the brother and sister to continue, best case scenario, you'll be able to do what so many parents do and brainwash your daughter into believing you did the best you can. No, the best you can is not staying with a woman who facilitates her son to torment your daughter. The best you can is to tell her, you know what? You're important enough to me, talking to your wife or the girlfriend, you're important enough to me for me not to set you up for failure. You can't act this way and have people like me and people like my daughter around. People won't want you around. You have to tell her something along these lines, give her the feedback so that she realizes how far off the course she is. Some form of leadership like that. And uh, I think that's it.